Today I want to talk to you about aortic aneurysm. I have a PA student with me who will be asking some questions and I'll be filling in the answers and hopefully at the end of this talk we will have cleared up some questions for you. What is aortic aneurysm? Let me begin by describing the wall of the blood vessel. Grossly, it is made up of three layers, tunica intima, tunica media, and the tunica adventitia. The tunica intima is the innermost layer. It is a smooth surface made up of one layer of endothelial cells and is in direct contact with blood. The tunica media is the muscular layer and has the ability to constrict or dilate the blood vessels. The outer layer is the tunica adventitia. To keep it very simple, an aneurysm is an abnormal bulging of the wall of the blood vessel. This bulging may occur on one side of the blood vessel or it may be circumferential. Where does aneurysm usually occur? The three common areas for an aneurysm are the brain, thorax, and the abdomen. Do people know when they have an aneurysm? Are there any warning signs? In general, most people do not know that they have an aneurysm until it ruptures. It usually is a silent killer, and it is truly a silent killer. Unfortunately, there are no warning signs, but there are risk factors that can predispose a person to getting an aneurysm. Could you comment on the risk factors? I'm going to focus uh, primarily on aneurysms in the thorax and the abdomen, not so much in the brain. The risk factors include age. It is very unlikely to present before age 55 to 60 years. The older a person becomes, the more likely to develop an aneurysm. The second risk factor is uncontrolled hypertension, which is closely related to atherosclerosis. The third risk factor is smoking. All these risk factors working together cause a bulging of the wall of the blood vessel. Is there anything that would alert a person that they have an aneurysm? Yes, if an aneurysm becomes larger than 5 centimeters, it can begin to create pain and discomfort in some patients. One of the findings on the abdominal examination is a pulsatile mass. If an aneurysm is found, how should it be monitored? Brain aneurysm should be monitored by MRI. Thoracic aneurysm should be monitored by a chest CT with intravenous contrast. Interestingly, abdominal aneurysms usually occur below the renal arteries and should be monitored by sonogram. Be aware that aortic rupture or retroperitoneal bleed cannot be reliably identified with ultrasound. In such cases, Abdominal CAT scan with intravenous contrast is required. Surgical intervention should be the logical option if an aneurysm has grown beyond its upper limit. What is the most dreaded complication of an aneurysm? The most dreaded complication of an aneurysm is rupture. If it ruptures in the brain, it causes subarachnoid bleed. If it occurs in the thorax, it bleeds into the mediastinum, and if it ruptures in the abdomen, it bleeds into the abdominal cavity. Are there any specific presentations that would accompany a ruptured aneurysm? Yes. In the brain, patients may complain of the worst headache of their life. In the thorax, they may complain of chest pain and back pain with associated hypotension and dizziness. In the abdomen, they may complain of back pain, abdominal pain, and leg pain. Some patients may become hypotensive and pass out, 
and also may have hematuria. The diagnosis of ruptured aneurysm should always be suspected in an elderly person with a history of hypertension, back pain, and hematuria. This presentation can sometimes lead the clinician to think of kidney stones instead of ruptured aneurysm. While the mortality rate after rupture is very high, early intervention is critical for a good outcome. Although the diagnosis may be relatively straightforward in the setting of syncope, back pain, and shock, with a tender pulsatile abdominal mass, the differential diagnosis varies depending on the presentation. This life-threatening disease process should be considered in the differential diagnosis for any patient that presents with back pain, an intra-abdominal process such as pancreatitis, diverticulitis, mesenteric ischemia, or even possible testicular torsion or gastrointestinal bleeding disorders, which would take in esophageal viruses, tumor, or ulcers. Thank you for sharing with the students today. You're very welcome. In closing, don't forget that there are many people living with aneurysms without a problem. It becomes a problem when it has grown to a life-threatening size that predisposes it to rupture. A slow leaking aneurysm or a ruptured aneurysm will affect the vital signs. Hypertension will be present with associated tachycardia. The key is always to suspect it and in so doing, it will not be missed. Well, thank you for listening and I do hope this short presentation will remind you that if you don't think about it, you will never make the diagnosis. I wish you well. Good night.